So I just finished this episode of ReZero. I actually rewatched it twice. And after rewatching it twice, it came to my attention that there's a question I have to ask. And I, I don't really understand because throughout the entire episode when I rewatched it twice, Subaru kept saying Rim. And to be honest with you, I have no fucking idea who this is. Like, who the hell is Rim? Why does he keep saying this person? Because... Clearly, I must have missed something. I must have missed an episode or something because who the hell's Rim? Seriously. Okay, shits and giggles aside, I'm just joking. I know it's in poor taste. I'm just joking. So this episode of ReZero mind-fucked me. Instantly mind-fucked me. Like, it is by far, I, I gotta say, I actually like this episode more than episode 15. Uh, it's my personal preference, but there's reasons for this, and I will get into it. But this episode of ReZero, it has a lot, a lot about it that I need to talk about. And I know instantly this video is probably going to be long. It's easily going to be over 10 minutes, I, I know for a fact, just because of some of the content I need to really dive into. Like I said, I rewatched this episode twice just to make sure I got the entirety of the message and I also made sure I got to understand some certain key scenes like the Beatrice scene. I, I, I needed to kind of rewatch that to get more out of that uh, part of the episode and then also the scene with Amelia and her death and all that. I, I rewatched it twice just to make sure I grasped everything and oh my god it was just as good the second time around as the first time around and it still felt like a fucking five minute episode. Oh my god. That, that, that's one thing I really hate about series I truly get into it feels so short I feel like when I sit down and watch an episode or read a chapter it just over like that and I'm like fuck it's gone I gotta wait an entire week or I gotta wait a year for the continuation or something I, I just I hate that I, I really 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 fucking hate that and that's exactly what this was episode 17 felt really quick to me because it was just that damn good so let's go in order the, the first part of the episode we have it to where our gang, our group, is being chased by the White Well. Now, this White Well was foreshadowed a couple episodes back, and as we know, Subaru, he can be sensed by demons and these beasts, these uh, magical beasts. He, he can be sensed because of the Witch's Curse. The masma that's com coming off of him can be sensed, and, you know, different creatures like demons and stuff can track him down to come at him. And that's kind of why the Well was there chasing him down the entire time. But the thing was, throughout the first part of it, there is a lot of build-up to a certain key scene, and I, I just couldn't believe what the meaning of this episode was. Like, I kind of understood the first watch, but when I watched it the second time around, I really grasped what this episode was trying to enforce, and what the writer of the series, I think, was trying to make us interpret. And it was quite the very dark message. It was a very dark fucking message, and I feel like I'm really starting to love this writer. I, I really love the writer of ReZero, just because of some of the things in this episode that really make me just appreciate the series a whole lot more. So, getting into it, the chase is on. The White Well is chasing Subaru and his group, the merchants and stuff. And throughout it, you see it where they're trying to figure out how can they escape this White Well. It's like hot on their trails, they're about to die. And all of a sudden, a decision is made. Rim says pretty much her final farewell. And she's like, I will hold it back. I'll hold it back as long as I can. You need to live. And she paralyzes him, just knocks him out. And she jumps off the cart and the scene that one scene right there is so powerful such a powerful scene when you see Subaru he's going unconscious and he slides up against the carriage and he's looking and you see it through his first person perspective you see Rim she, she's walking through the carriage she's about to jump off she turns around there's no sound no sound at all no sound effects anything it's just completely nothing and as you see it and you see it from Subaru's perspective it makes the image so more impactful she jumps off and that's the last we see of Rim amongst the entire episode. She willingly lays down her life for Subaru. She dies for Subaru. This is not the first time this has happened. Now, this is actually the second time in ReZero where this has happened. As we know, episode 15, Rim, she tried to save Subaru. She died trying to save him, and she did free him before she died. This episode, episode 17... She sacrifices herself to save Subaru. She dies willingly. She lays down her life for him. It's such a sad scene. It really goes to just 
forcing that impact of how much Rin really cares for Subaru, how much she respects him, how much she loves him. It just, it really goes to show you how far she will go. And when she does that, it's such an emotional scene. And then after this, as it continues on, Subaru wakes up and he's talking to Oto that's in the front carriage driving the car. And they have a dispute where Subaru's like, we need to go back. We need to go back to Rim. We need to go save her. You need to turn your ass fucking around and go save her. Turn this fucking car around. He's like yelling at Oto. And as the conversation continues on, Oto forgets. And Subaru's reaction to this is so human, it's not even funny. Like, I, I honestly... Some people might laugh at that scene, but the reaction Subaru made to that very scene was probably one of the best moments I think I have seen of anime of all year. I'm not even joking, because of the realism in that. Now, of course, ReZero is not really that realistic because of Magical Beast, you know, time reset, shit like that. What I'm getting at is, in terms of a natural human reaction, that was so realistic, it was just not even funny. I was just completely blown away by that one scene. When you see Oto's like, who's Rim? Who are you talking about? And like, literally, you just, we know the emotions probably Subaru felt at that moment. He just punches him straight in the fucking face. Like, he just knocked that man fucking out. Like, he was mad. And to be honest, uh, even though we kind of know what's going on here now with, you know, Rim at the end of the episode, the reaction Subaru did makes so much fucking sense. Because, I mean, after someone willingly lays down their fucking life for you, I mean, you just straight up and say, who the fuck is Rim? Who, who is this? You're gonna be pretty fucking pissed off. Okay, the salt is just gonna be on a whole new level. Let, let's just let's be real here. The salt is at an all-time high if that fucking happened to you and you had someone say that to your face. So Subaru punching the man, it makes a lot of sense. And then after that, as he's getting really pissed off, he comes to the conclusion that the reason why the well is chasing him is thanks to the witch's curse. You know, how the smell on him is causing demons and stuff to come after him. And he realizes the reason why Rim had to die was thanks to him. He is the reason Rim died. He is the one that caused this suffering. He is the one that caused all these people to die just now. He is the very reason. And as he's reflecting and he's realizing what just happened and Oto overhears him, he shoves him out of his cart. That too is another realistic moment. You could say whatever you will about that. You could call Oto an asshole, you could call him a despicable human being, and he, he is. At the end of the day, he's a pretty nasty human being for doing something like that to a human being. But, here's a saying, okay? I don't remember exactly where the quote comes from, but I, I kind of remember it. At, when humans are face-to-face, -face, okay, with death, death is coming. And death is right there staring them in the face, and they know they're going to die. If something is not done, humanity tends to show their true nature at that very moment, right before death. They show their true image, their true personality. And what Oto did was something very human as well. If you're faced with death, obviously survival instincts are going to kick in. They're going to kick in and you're going to want to live. That, that's the natural human instinct. You're going to want to live. You'll do anything to kick, scream, to survive. That's what she will do. And when that happens, Oto does that, many are going to get pissed with him. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? That, that's a dick move. But he was thinking about his life, and his survival instincts kicked in. And he wanted to save his ass. And he realized if it really is Subaru's fault, he just needs to be the bait, and let, uh, he's going to try to survive. But once that happens... The next thing happens, which really goes to show us the true self of Subaru. And we've seen this a couple of times throughout the series of ReZero. This ain't really the first time we've seen Subaru about to die and he doesn't want to die. When he falls out of the cart and he comes face to face with the well, instantly all of us watchers at that moment, we all thought he was going to die. Like, let's just be real. We all thought Subaru was dead as fuck at that moment. We, we all thought he was just going to die. When he is laying on the ground and he's like, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, and you just see him get up as, after he's, his body's entirely broken, after the well just blows him away, and his arms are flapping, like, he, he's broken, he's broken be beyond belief. And as he's running and frowning around, you just see the despicable looking face, this grotesque image of him as he's saying I don't want to die I don't want to die I want to live and he's just sitting there running running nowhere like we don't know exactly what direction he's just running trying to save himself and that image 
is such a perfect reflection of a true human nature if you want to survive, when your survival instincts kick in and you don't want to die. And this is very, very real when it comes to Subaru's character. We know since the very early stages of ReZero, Subaru doesn't like dying. He doesn't want to die. There's many cases throughout the series to where he could easily kill himself and it would be easier. It, it would, but he doesn't. And there's many reasons for this which I'm about to dive into. For one, nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to fucking die, which once again goes back to the natural human instinct. Regardless if he has a power or not to reset, he does not want to die. He still experiences pain. He knows how bad it is to die. Even if he could come back, nobody wants to experience your fucking bones shattering and breaking in your body and then dying. Nobody wants to experience that. I mean, seriously, like, even if you knew you could come back, okay? If you felt like every fucking bone in your body just being crunched slowly and dying slowly, you wouldn't want to experience that because I'm willing to bet that one minute of torture feels like an eternity. It probably feels horrible. And he won't forget that. Why do you think his mind is so fucked up right now? It's because of how much he has died and how broken he is now after all the trauma he's experienced. It's because of that. And no human can really understand what Subaru is going through because nobody has the ability to reset and constantly come back to life. So so Subaru's on his own. Nobody can really relate to him when it comes to that, but I mean, if you can know anything, is every human fears death. Majority of everybody fears death in some way or another, and looking at it like that, it, it makes a lot of sense why he wouldn't want to die. But on top of that, too, with his ability, he has no idea how his reset even works. We still, at the end of the day, have no idea how his ability works. We kind of have a little bit of glimpses here and there throughout the story so far, and even in this episode we got a lot revealed. We still don't know how his reset works. We don't know how he gets a checkpoint. We don't know if it's because when he gets critically injured and he gets recovered. We know if he, like, completes a certain section of, like, whatever he has to do and, it, you know, he gets a checkpoint. We have no idea how he does it. We don't know wh how these conditions are for his ability. And on top of that, we had no idea what would happen if he was to say something about his ability. But now after this episode, so we do. It's not just him that is in danger, but someone around him can die. Legit die. And so he can't just say like, oh, I, I have this power. The person will die in front of him. So he can't even, you know, relate to someone, talk to someone about what is going on because they will die. So there's no point to even speak to anyone to begin with. So even if he doesn't die, what's the point? He, he can't say it to anyone anyways because they would die in front of him. So yeah. So, he doesn't know how many times he could reset. Like, th this man doesn't know if he can die, like, once and come back. He doesn't know if he, if he has a limited amount of lives. He has no idea. He could be in Super Mario Brothers and have, like, maybe a set pool of lives, and when he dies a certain amount of times, he doesn't come back. He has no idea. He had no idea what would happen if he really tried to say something about his ability. He expected to die and never come back, and that's what he was doing. And because of this, you just got to really feel bad for him, because that's why he was frilling around and wanting to, you know, live. But then, let's go into some of the deeper aspects about that scene. Now, now that I've talked about the natural human instinct, okay, I've talked about all of that, let's talk about the message of that scene and what that first half of the episode was really trying to imply. So, as I already said, Rim laid down her life for Subaru. She died for him. She wanted to die, or she, she willingly died just to save his ass. And the, the fucked up part about this, when you think about all of it, is that Subaru did not do the same. Granted, he did try to do it for Emilia later on in the episode, but he did not do the same for Rim. Now hear me out, okay? Subaru in this episode, he had no idea, okay? He had no idea at the time when he was on the ground and he was begging for his life. He had no idea at that time what really happened to Rim. He had no idea. He had no idea what was really going on. And so all he knew is there is a possibility Brim was alive. So when he got up and he was running and he was begging for his life, he legit left Rim to die. Regardless if Rim was dead or not, which it's very obvious to assume she was dead at that moment, but he, as a person, was unaware. He was unaware at that moment. He was unaware that Rim was alive or dead. And the well was right there. He did not try to go back for Rim at all. He didn't even try to look for her just to confirm if she is dead or not. That's, that is ironic and sad 
because think about this. Rim laid down her life and died for him. He thought about himself, was selfish, and ran away to save his own ass and left her. Regardless if she was already dead, he still did not know at that time. He left her to die. Now, the next fucked up part is this. Rim, as a demon, was the one that died. She did a very compassionate and kind thing. She laid down her life for him. He, as a human being, decided to choose the selfish route and saved himself. And what even emphasizes this part so much more is when he's walking beaten and broken. You see how his body's just ba uh, bashed in. As he's walking down the path and eventually comes to the dragon, he says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rim. He pretty much, he left her. He left her. That's the fucked up part. Now, after that, after those events... Subaru winds up in the mansion. And this is where the next part of the message pops up. Subaru, he feels guilt. He, he, he's been through a lot. He, he, he has experienced so fucking much. And he's tired of it. He, he's just so tired. And after what happened to Rim, he didn't care anymore. He, had, he didn't really care. His emotions got the better of him. And when he got to Amelia, he walked up to her. He's like, Amelia, you, we need to go. We need... We need to go. I need to save you. You'll trust me. In a couple days, you'll understand. And because of this, it caused a misunderstanding. And eventually, you decide, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to say and I'm going to reveal everything. And then the hands popped out. Now, I'll get into that in just a second. Let's talk about the scene with Amelia. So, Amelia and Subaru's interaction. Subaru did a huge fuck up in that scene. He, he really fucked up hard. If he would have just sat down, explained himself, then maybe Amelia could have understood him. And maybe could have been able to, like, okay, that's what's going on. And, you know, maybe there could have been something done there where Amelia didn't have to die in this episode. But, we also have to look at Subaru's perspective. This is a man that just had someone that he knows cares about him just die for him. And then he chooses a selfish route and he le lets her die. And he realizes this. And so, he comes in, he's not clear of mind. He's definitely not clear of mind. He, he's right now at the point of the, his lowest. He, he's literally not knowing what to do. He just wants to have someone he can finally just talk to. He wants to talk to someone. He wants someone to believe in him. Someone to really understand what he's been going through. How much hell has happened to him throughout the series. And it's very sad because our poor man Subaru... He, he's very selfish. That, that's one of the things we know. It, it's one of the things that's been popping up in the recent episodes. We get to see how his true character is. How selfish he is. How greedy he is. All of this. We get to see this really key point about his character. And the reason, one of the main things about this is, is he wants someone to understand what he's going through. He wants someone to know what is happening, but he can't. And so, he finally breaks down, and he tries to tell Amelia what is really happening. And when he does, the scene is so powerful, because now he decided to lay down his life. He decided to say, I'm done. Fuck it. Fuck it all. I'm done. That, that, that's exactly what he's thinking. Like, I'm done with this shit. I'm done with not saying nothing. I'm done with being alone and in sadness. I, I'm tired of that. When he finally decides to say something, Amelia dies. And this is probably one of the most twisted things about the entirety of this series so far. And I'm not going to pop up jokes with, you know, Rim being twisted like Twister. But the, the twist about this episode is that one of the main things that Subaru has constantly been trying to do is to save Amelia. He wants to save her. He loves her. He wants Amelia. And he's been selfish about Amelia. And the very thing that he's been trying to protect, the very person he wants to protect and love and have her care for him, she dies, and he is the cause of her death. He is the reason she died. It was because of him she died. He couldn't even die. He didn't even want to live, but he still continued living. How fucked is that? When Subaru decides to go against his nature, his very nature as a human being, he decides to cast aside and say, fuck it, I'm done, I'm going to die, I don't give a shit if this is my final time, he throws it to the side, I want someone to understand what I've been through, he can't even die. 
He can't even die. The curse did not let him die. It killed the very person around him he cares about. Two people. Rim and Amelia. See how fucked up this is? You, you see the message here? How fucked it is? Rim lays down her life for him. And then he decides to leave Rim for dead. Selfishly. Comes back and he feels guilty. And when he finally decides to say something and lay down his life. But he couldn't even lay down his life. Think about how fucked that is. And how your mental state's going to be after something like that. Even if he does die next week, that's not going to disappear. That's definitely not. That's going to scar him completely after something like that. After being responsible for someone's death like that. That's just not going to go away. Oh, fuck no. It's not. After what happened to Rim. After how much fucking tragedy that happened to Rim. And how Subaru reacted to that. I can't even imagine how he's going to react to Amelia. I mean... Holy fuck, Beetlejuice was about to chop her in half. He was about to fucking rip her into little pieces in this episode, and holy fuck, I, I really thought that was about to happen. I'm not even joking. I was like, am I about to see a, the corpse of Amelia be, get mangled by Beetlejuice? Am I about to see this? Am I about to see a corpse ripped up and mangled? I'm like, this is some pretty fucking dark shit. And then Puck, you know, enters the battlefield. He's pretty pissed off, and then, you know, he's there, and most likely he's going to be the reason why Subaru dies next week. But getting into Beetlejuice, though. So, Beetlejuice pops up. Actually, whoa, 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 I'm going way too far ahead. Let me talk about Beatrice. I, I'll save that for a second, okay? I don't want to get into Beatrice yet. That, that's my final part of the, you know, video. So, uh, you have a door Beatrice, she pops up. And this scene in the episode is probably one of the biggest scenes throughout the entirety of the episode. And many might misinterpret this scene, or many might not understand the scene. And I could probably still not understand the scene, because it's just that big of a mystery. And there's just a lot of question marks throughout the entirety of that scene with Beatrice and Subaru. So kind of talking about it for a minute... You have it to where Beatrice is like, I cannot honor your request. I cannot kill you. I will not kill you. But... I don't want you to die in front of me. And she kicks him out of the mansion. She's like, I will protect this mansion regardless. I'm tired of seeing pain and suffering. I'll kick you out. At least don't die in front of me. I don't want to see you when you die. So, amongst this, there is one key word of dialogue that is said. Beatrice says that it seems like I can't really keep uh, keep all your wishes. I, like, I can't grant all your wishes. Now, it's some along the lines of that, like she says something like that. And the dialogue that Beatrice says is very strange. It's really fucking strange, because let me explain. Earlier on in ReZero, we found out that, you know, Subaru, to live, he asked Beatrice to save him, protect him. Remember, Beatrice, like, I want you to protect me. Or Subaru's to Beatrice, like, I want you to protect me, Beatrice. I want you to protect me. Don't let me die. And remember for those days he tried to, you know, stay alive and he didn't want to die thanks to being bitten by the dog. He managed to kind of survive, but then he had to take his life. He jumped off the cliff and died. And he went went against the contract that he set up with Beatrice. Remember that. He, he went against that contract. Now... Thinking about this real quick, Beatrice says a line that's just very strange, like, it seems like I can't grant all your wishes, and Subaru really only asked one thing in that entire uh, moment in the episode, please kill me, and she wouldn't. So, this is strange, she said wishes, not just wish, wishes. Another thing too, Beatrice's entire atmosphere, the way she had this aura coming off of her, it made it look like she knew a whole lot more than she was letting on. Like, she knew a hell of a lot of whatever was going on. She even says that it's already too late. It doesn't matter, it's already too late, and then she just shoves Subaru out through the portal, and he teleports into the middle of the woods, and then meets, you know, Beetlejuice. So, Beatrice knows something. She, she definitely knows something, and I'm just gonna throw out a theory here, okay? I'm throwing out a theory, this does not mean it's going to happen. FYI, does not mean it's going to happen. I'm just throwing it out. What if Beatrice remembers what's going on, or she remembers some form of contract she had with Subaru because of the magic of the contract? Now, we don't know how the entirety of this world works, okay? Let me explain. We don't know how magic, all of the magic of ReZero works. We don't know how all of it is. And we do know there is magic to where someone could come back and reset and come to, like, another timeline. You're just back here again. What if the contract he made with Beatrice in the past, okay, in the other timeline he was in before he reset and then he killed himself by jumping off the cliff, 
What if Beatrice somehow still has that contract with him and she remembers that contract? She remembers it and that's why she's able to remember Subaru and why she's able to understand kind of what is going on here. And why she said wishes instead of wish. When she said, I guess I can't grant all your wishes, that she meant like I can't protect you. I can't protect you like you wanted me to because of the contract, so I'm going to let you go die. That right there, I'm like, yo. Yo, what if? J j just what if Beatrice knows? What, what if she knows about it? What if she has some form of memory of the contract, and that's how she kind of knows what's going on here? But she probably can't say nothing, and that's why she's not really saying much about it. Now, moving past that, Beetlejuice. Okay. So as I said already earlier on in the video, Beetlejuice was about to rip a million and a half. And I thought I was going to see some very dark shit, okay? We come to find out something about him that kind of clarifies a lot. As we know, episode 15, Rim, she twisted F. She, she twisted around like a fucking ragdoll and she, she dropped dead, okay? We didn't really know what happened. We, we just knew that whatever type of magic that Beetlejuice used, it was incredibly strong. It was something ridiculous to be able to do something like that to Rim. Even though Rim is not completely the strongest thing out there, we know for a fact that there is, you know, she's strong enough to be able to fight. And for this man to be able to just mangle her like nothing from a distance, it was scary as fuck. With this episode, we found out that the magic Beetlejuice uses is some form of hands. And these hands... Oh, these hands, they have a big, big question mark on them right now. Because we see in this episode, this exact same episode with Beetlejuice's hands that pop up behind him, we see hands come out from behind Subaru. We see hands come from a portal and then try to grab his heart. And then we see these come out of Beetlejuice's back. The connection right now Subaru has with this man is just ridiculous. We, we clearly see it. That something's really going on here. Because from what we found out was, is these hands are very special. Very, very special. Gifted to you. And so I'm willing to bet the certain people, like, you know, Beetlejuice is the only people that can have it. So Subaru has something like this. The main question is, exactly, is who's those hands belong to? Because... If the hands are from Beetlejuice coming out of his back, does that mean that those hands coming out from behind Subaru, is that his? Or is that someone else? Someone else behind him. Someone else doing shit. Think about that for a second. Just, just, just think about that for a second. Anyways, another thing to look at is that we do know now, since he can see these, it adds a lot of questions. Why couldn't he see them before? Why couldn't Subaru see these hands beforehand? And why can he now see them? Why? What is the reason here? Why can he see them now? Question raised. On top of that, Puck arriving at the end of the episode. What's going to happen? Is he going to kill everyone around? Make, you know, a huge snow blizzard? Kill everyone? Kill Subaru as well? What will happen there? On top of that, another question that is raised is, like, what is really going on with this well? What can this well really do? Because we now know that something this well does, it can erase the existence of someone. Because the way Rim disappears, it isn't like the normal way. Because it's not just memory loss. It ain't like just everybody forgot about Rim, but more like Rim just does not exist in this world anymore. Because her stuff disappeared. All of the, the traces of Rim ever existing completely disappeared in this episode. When Subaru went to her room, her stuff wasn't there. It, it looked like she didn't even exist at all. And then on top of that, we now know about someone that fought this white well a long time ago, which was the Master Swordsman. This raises a huge question as well. If the well can erase everyone's existence, kill everyone, okay, and then they're gone for good, or erase them, or forget their memories, how come Oto could remember the Master Swordsman? Why could he remember that man, if supposedly he died? If he supposedly died, nobody should remember him. Because we did see in the last week's episode that when the merchant, he disappeared, nobody remembered him. So it lets us know that whoever gets killed by this well, that nobody can remember them. So it's like your existence gets erased. So, what happened? Like, for instance, 
what's going on here. Anyways. Episode overall. Too damn good. Too damn good. I don't know how long this video is. I, I know it's easily over 20 minutes right now, but you all have a uh, wonderful day or not wherever you live. I'm very sorry for the ramble and the long conversation. Forgive me for that. Just a lot to talk about because this episode was so fucking good. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.